Welcome to Out and About, the program where we talk to people we meet as part of our work. In this program, we talk to Ken Groves, a resident of Titchfield in Hampshire, about his research into the history of his house and its probable use as a schoolhouse and possible links to Shakespeare. Well, fortunately, um, the um, Titchfield Village Trust, uh, way back in the 1950s, had um, looked at the history of Titsfield and had found out how interesting the actual history was because we had the oldest church in, in southern England uh, built around about 680 AD. We also had the Titsfield Abbey, which was very obviously something of great interest. And um, shortly after that, about, about 10 years later, uh, the idea of forming a history society came out and a number of very interesting books were written which recorded a lot of the history of Titsfield. And from that point of view, it was rather easy to find out about the details of the history, but I became interested in finding out more. Obviously, I had some very uh, interesting people who I got very friendly with, in particular the late George Watts, who became a very great friend of mine, and he undoubtedly knew the complete history. He was uh, president of the uh, Titsfield History Society, and he gave lectures uh, uh, throughout more or less the whole of his life. He was born in Titsfield, and he devoted his life to the history of Titsfield. Now, obviously, I learned so much from him, and there were a number of other uh, very, very friendly uh, people uh, involved uh, in the Titsfield History Society who I became friendly with and they were of great help and I was able to find out quite a lot of interesting things particularly when it came to our cottage which no one realised was anything like as old when we uh, when we f uh, decided to renovate it we found out it wasn't uh, it was much earlier than than 1550, 1580, as we thought was a build, and we discovered by Dendra dating by Oxford University that the, that the date, building date was 1447. And then, of course, investigating further, we found that on, on a, quite a few maps and other documents, it was called the schoolhouse. Um, and therefore, one is quite fair to say 99% certain it was a school. In 1447, if it were a school, it would have been a monastic school, which make it, makes it even more unusual. We then have the undoubted um, fact that the third Earl of Southampton was friendly with uh, uh, William Shakespeare, and we know that Shakespeare dedicated um, his first two poems, the only two uh, things he wrote that he dedicated to anyone. He dedicated the third L, and the second dedication was in friendly terms. So undoubtedly he was very familiar with uh, William Shakespeare. And we then have the association of a man called John Florio, who undoubtedly on investigation turned out to be probably the most knowledgeable man in Tudor England at that time, because he actually wrote complicated dictionaries and in order to write a dictionary particularly in those days you had to have all the knowledge available uh, which he had and um, the fact that that he was actually he was a tutor to the third earl at the time that the third earl was friendly with Shakespeare undoubtedly Shakespeare and John Florio would have met and that brings one up to the fact that it's quite possible you know and I emphasise possible that um, John Florio could have been the source of the remarkable knowledge which Shakespeare used in his writing of his plays. We then get the fact that John Aubrey, uh, rather later after the third Earl and Shakespeare had died, uh, said that he'd been told that Shakespeare was a schoolmaster in the country. And we have the possibility that if he were a schoolmaster in the country, it could have been at the school we have at our cottage. But there's absolutely no proof of this. 
It's a very good and plausible story and it cannot be proved that it's wrong.